Hi, Stylespreneurs. Welcome to another episode of the Stylespreneur Podcast. I am your host, Damali Fields. And today we have with us Gina Woods. She is a social entrepreneur, investor, and business advisor with over 15 years of creating and developing successful beauty brands that prioritize community reinvestment. Gina is also the co-founder of Donna's Recipe alongside Tabitha Brown. As a business mentor, Gina leads a business mastermind program, which empowers women to kickstart and expand their business ventures. Additionally, Gina established the LA Kids Entrepreneur Camp, an in-person hands-on educational program, which helps kids to meet entrepreneurs and learn all about entrepreneurship. Gina, come on in the room. How are you? Hi, how are you? I'm doing great and happy to be here. Oh, I'm so excited to have you. I'm excited about everything that you are doing. And before we even like really get into it, could you please tell us about your journey into entrepreneurship and how you decided to focus on beauty brands? Sure. So I, I would say I've been an entrepreneur since um, I can't even remember, very young okay. age, six, seven years old. And six, seven years old, uh, selling uh, pickles and, and lemonade in front of my house oh, wow. at a very young age. I attended Purdue University where I did focus on business administration and management. Mm -hmm. So I've already had that uh, business mind. Um, I was in corporate America for a couple years. And okay. then that's when I decided to go in the beauty industry. And so um, I started with hair extensions. Okay. Um, in Chicago, actually. So okay. hair extensions <laughs> in Chicago. And so I just really had a, a love for the beauty industry and mm -hmm. just helping beautify and uh, make women feel better mm -hmm. um, and more empowered. And so that's what led me into the beauty industry and started my entrepreneurial journey. Okay. I love it. So like you, I was the same way where I was literally in, I want to say fifth grade and I was selling keychains. I don't know if you remember when we used to make those little string things. I was selling those. Um, I love to draw. So I would like draw pictures and sell that. So I oh. would definitely agree. Like entrepreneurship is just something that's in you. Like it's nothing that you can, you can kind of pick it up, but I really feel like people are born entrepreneurs. I totally agree as well. I totally agree. I think we were, we're come from a creator and so mm -hmm. we are born creators. Oh, um, of course. And so Gina, there is something that you are doing right now that is like the hot topic and you are the co-founder of Donna's Recipe. Please tell us about the collaboration, how the idea came about. Like, did you already know Tabitha? Like, give us all the details. Right, right. Yeah. So again, I've been in the beauty industry as an entrepreneur for many years. And so Tabitha and I just knew each other because uh, I still call him Coach Chance, but her husband okay. Chance uh, was a basketball coach for both of our sons. Okay. And I just, I saw Tabitha, um, I knew she was the coach's wife and I just like, you know, having just really good exchange with her okay. as far as life with kids, et cetera. And so we just got on the path of just talking about our different journeys and me sharing that I'm an entrepreneur and her sharing that she was a creator, okay. influencer. And so we had a lot of good value at in our conversations as far as me learning from her, from mm -hmm. her being an influencer and me sharing my knowledge with being an entrepreneur. And so that kind of uh, married together okay, because it goes hand in hand. And as we continue to have these really great conversations and value at um, exchanges, I remember thinking um, she would always call her hair Donna. Mm -hmm. And I would, you know, Donna needs her own hair care brand. Right. And so I just, I, that's something that I share with just me internally, just as mm -hmm. looking through videos, I'm like, Donna needs her own hair care brand. It yeah. wasn't until like a few years later, I would say a couple years later, that it just kind of kept staying on my heart okay. and I just reached out to her and I said you know Tabitha I really think that we should do a hair care brand together mm. and 
she was like, oh my God, I've been wanting to do that. And yeah. so that's where Donna's recipe launched. And it's a, just been amazing. We're in all Ulta beauty stores nice. nationwide, over a thousand target doors. And so it just catapulted into just this amazing, beautiful brand. Oh, wow. I love that the relationship that you guys have was something that was organic, um, not anything that was forced. And it was just like, hey, we can like both use our expertise, put them together and make this amazing hair care line. So I love that. Now, I know you guys decided to stick with the vegan. What was the determining factor of having a line that was going to be vegan? And how do you feel like it kind of separates you guys from other people in the market? All right. Really good question. So um, Tabitha, she's known for being uh, vegan and really mm -hmm. promoting so is completely on brand. She's the face of the right. brand. So anything other than vegan wouldn't really tie into like what she represents. Right. And it's interesting enough when I actually came to her with the idea back in 2020, I didn't fully know it at the time, but I was on my beginning journey of being a vegan. Oh, wow. Um, Started out where just one week I wanted to eat completely clean fruits, mm -hmm. vegetables, nuts, seeds. And that was a t very hectic time of life, the midst of the pandemic. Okay. And I was just going to town eating crazy. And I was like, this can really go bad. Right. <laughs> And so I was like, let me just do one week of eating clean, mm -hmm. um, even call it vegan, veganism. It was just very strict fruits, fruits, fruits and berries, nuts, right. you know, nuts and seeds. And um, I felt better. My skin mm -hmm. felt better. I had more energy for my children. I have four young children. Oh, wow. Okay. And, yeah. And at the time homeschooling. And <laughs> so I was like, I'll do it for another week. And then oh. so that. Next week turned into four years at this point. So wow. I've been vegan for four years. And so as on that process, just educating myself on like what we put inside our bodies, mm -hmm. as well as what we put on our scalps um, is really important. And I've been a pioneer of just the integrity of what our community has, um, mm -hmm. has been lacking for so many years so right. I've always along my entrepreneurial journey was very mindful of what we put on our scalps in our bodies and so it just was aligned for both of us mm -hmm. to have a vegan hair care brand wow and just to piggyback on that I know like even with the ingredients that you guys have decided to put in the products that you wanted high quality now why was that important for the customers and the environment Right, right. So again, I going back to the community, I'm born and raised Gary, Indiana, predominantly okay. a black neighborhood. And so I know like the selection that we had mm -hmm. um, for here and there, just even all beauty spaces, even in the grocery store, it was very limiting. Right. Um, we, where I was, I was like, what is going on? We it, There was times where it was like, we had to go to another city to even get fresh fruit. Oh, wow. So I mean, it's like the whole spectrum of where I come from. And so it's so important to offer like premium, high quality mm -hmm. ingredients and being mindful of what are the ingredients. Right. So that's why it was super important for me personally. And I know that Tabitha, she shares that same sentiment mm -hmm. that it's just super important on what and uh, what we serve to the community okay uh, and we, we have a purpose-driven brand okay now were there any challenges when you guys decided that it's going to be vegan we want high quality ingredients like were there any challenges that you guys faced Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. When you're presenting high quality ingredients obviously going back the cost is greater mm-hmm so you have a higher cost. So it's like, how do we um, have that higher cost and how do we uh, prevent where it's, where on the, at, on the retail shelves that okay. the customers at having such a huge cost and we're mm -hmm. not passing it off, off to the cost. So there's different ways that we have to creatively um, work to keep our costs down, but also okay. not passing it to our customers. So yeah, at, at every turn, as you know, to be oh, an yeah. entrepreneur, or there's another hurdle yeah. you have to jump over. So yes, definitely being a uh, vegan with higher premium ingredients, you have a higher cost mm -hmm. and you have to find different ways to like offset um, 
where we are still offering at an affordable price, which we do. Okay. Which products are affordable price. Okay. And now when it comes to like Ghana's recipe products also being effective, but also enjoyable, because sometimes you think of vegan and you don't necessarily hear the word or feel the word enjoyable. So what were you guys incorporating to make sure that it was also enjoyable while being effective? Yeah. So that's been, um, I'm, I'm a big innovator. I love different creative ideas. What are we bringing new to the market? Mm -hmm. We're of the same, um, but also that familiarity. You don't want something like too alien where it's like, I'm not trying to be anybody's guinea pig. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, I, I know just from my experience and even doing all of my four kids experience, it was not an enjoyable experience. Mm. It was daunting. Like we call it wash day. Oh, I don't want to wash Exactly. <laughs> I don't want to do my hair. All these right. things comes to the people that we strategically wanted to serve. And so that's why it's like, how can we spin this up to, to deliver like great ingredients, mm -hmm. but it's fun, it smells good. And so that's why, how I thought of the sweet potato pie collection, because mm. with the, also she, you know, whips up vegan recipes. And so I was like, oh, we can, Donna's recipe can have a sweet potato pie collection. But the things that you will find in a sweet potato pie, such as sweet potato extract, mm -hmm. cinnamon, vanilla, all of those things are in the sweet potato pie collection. For I instance. love it. Yeah. And so when you, ex when you, use the products you're like oh my god I feel better like if mm -hmm. you smell vanilla it is you the aroma of it you just naturally feel better and yes. so I wanted to include those different aspects in it to make you feel better the quality of your hair better and so it is something that you go to look to and even even children which is important to teach mm -hmm. them about self-care and like my daughter like you need to learn how to do your own hair she enjoys picking up Donna's recipe because she loves the smell of it. She loves the way it's mm -hmm. tangled with her hair easier. And so that's like the differentiation that we brought to the market is that you don't see any other sweet potato pie. No. Where it's <laughs> easier manageability. Um, it's like all coupled into one. Mm -hmm. And so that's that was the reason behind just to make this hair care experience more enjoyable and exciting that you look forward to. Gotcha. And I will say I haven't had the chance to uh, use the products yet, but <laughs> you guys did send me some. And yeah. I will tell you, I opened it up and I would instantly was like, oh, that smells so good. It, it does. It does smell. And I love sweet potato pie. So I'm all about the sweet potatoes. <laughs> right. So before even trying it, I can already say it's enjoyable because it smells amazing. Exactly, exactly. Like it, from the experience from the packaging mm -hmm. where it's so nice that you even want to put it on your bathroom countertop and exactly. leave it there. The smell, the ingredients, the quality. Yeah, so from front to the back, we wanted to cover all the bases. Yes, and even the packaging for, I mean, I'm going to have to do a, a video review um, but yeah. even just opening it up and like the whole process of just getting the products so far have been like a win-win. I was like, they know what they're doing. They know about the <laughs> customer experience. <laughs> so you right. are already winning with me. Um, but yeah, so I know you've had this 15 year long track of dealing with beauty brands, made them, making them successful. What were some of the key factors when moving into or creating Donna's recipe that you felt like you brought, brought from those 15 years of experience? Oh, wow. It's, um, um, I can't remember his name at the point. But it's, it's a man who said, um, you can only, you can't connect the dots moving forward. You only can connect the dots looking back. Wow. And so every step that I've been through, it's been times where I'm like, why am I doing this? Or, mm -hmm. you know, even in corporate America, I'm like, why, what's, what's, why am I here? And it's like, those experiences have helped to build this amazing empire that we have today of Donna's recipe. Mm -hmm. Every those step I mean all facets of my entrepreneur journey have helped this to become what it is today mm -hmm. and also having the patience 
because when you're jumped into something, when you get something too soon, just like when some if someone wins the three hundred million lottery and they, Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. they, you know, get, I mean, it goes away that quick. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's basically in this seasoning and this making of me as an entrepreneur. Um, that have been so great. So like I mentioned before, we're in Ulta Beauty and Target. So in these big spaces, uh, relationships are so huge Mm -hmm. and Yeah. important because people want to do business with people that they like, enjoy, Mm -hmm. and also make them money. <laughs> so Exactly. you have to understand like all of those things work together. And then how are you, I'm really, like I said, I'm really big on relationships. What what am I doing to continuously pour into them? Okay. Um, it, it is a business relationship, but also just personally, I think Mm-hmm. like I, mentioned, I have a mastermind and a lot of times we can just, you know, get straight to business, but Right. it's important to know like who you are as a person. And, you know, we do things such as we send surveys out to all of our people that we work with and what's your birthday, what's your favorite color? Right. What do you like? You like scented candles. And so we can just randomly on a Tuesday send a care package to one of our buyers just to say, Right. thank you for doing business with us. And I feel like part of this 15 year journey has led me to that part, um, to the point of just understanding like the small things actually, Mm -hmm. the small things are the big things. So Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. I always tell the story about like I have a, a my OB, she's in Florida and I have moved around for the past 10 years. But whenever I go to Florida, I go see that same OB just because of her customer service, just because she takes notes and she remembers things and she send those notes out. And I'm like, that's the person that I want to service me. That's the person I want to do business with because of those small things. Exactly. Those small things are the big things. Exactly. Now, I know you mentioned your mastermind. I would love to know more about the mastermind because um, I know you're empowering women and that's really important. So if you could share a little bit more about your mastermind. Sure. So, I mean, again, that was something that happened completely organic. Okay. I, um, we can rewind just a little bit. I just had my fourth kid and Okay. I was living... I was new to Los Angeles. So Los Angeles was, was a culture shock to me, like just the cost of living, like, oh my. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I lived and in San so, Jose for a little bit, so I know. right, right. So, and I was coming from that time, I was coming directly from uh, Columbus, Ohio. So you can imagine like the Midwest coming Mm -hmm. to Los Angeles. It was just like, you know, the cost of living was crazy. Yeah. And so I wanted to start a new business venture and I actually started and I started exploring the sales channel of Amazon Okay. and just to keep in mind, just to give you perspective, I had a newborn, a one and a half year old, a three year old and a six year old. Oh my goodness. So it was like Luke is everywhere. I'm a business owner and starting a new business. <laughs> mm hmm So I was like, I need type of support, like where's a platform that can help, you know, really get this new venture off. Okay. And it was women's undergarments. I was studying Amazon because I was just fascinated from just a customer perspective. Like Mm how can I order something like on my doorstep the next day? -hmm. Okay. It was just all aspects like the buy now, but I don't have to enter my credit card. Exactly. And I started to find out that you can, any merchant, any business owner can actually be on Amazon to sell their products. And I was just Okay. like, oh, wow. And I remember, actually, it was before I started the business be while I was pregnant. So the day that my son was born, I had my first sale. And then within the next couple months, I hit like $100,000 in sales for Oh, the wow. month. And I was like, okay. And this, mind you, you know, if you have the perspective, I thought I have all these little kids. Mm And -hmm. so I, I'm a big sharer. So I was telling everyone like, you should start um, a business and you can start it on this amazing platform. Amazon is very, you know, uh, friendly, uh, easy to entry. Mm -hmm. uh, form. And so I would, I actually started the mastermind with my family, like my siblings, Okay. like this is how you can start a business and you can put it on Amazon. And then I went into helping just other women, women, particularly that had kids as well, Okay. where they start their business. So that's how the mastermind started. And 
it's amazing us as women is just such amazing energy. Right. So even if you never started a business, we had accountants and lawyers and doctors, all of these amazing people that have all these myriad of experiences and we come together in a melting pot. It was just invaluable. Amazing. Oh, I love that. So now with your mastermind, what would you say are some of the biggest challenges that you're seeing these women deal with and how are you able to help them? Um, a lot that would come up is access to capital. Mm -hmm. And that was a big one. Um, another one I would say is just kind of that starting, getting off the launching pad, mm -hmm. <laughs> like execute to go. Um, but we would rally together and just really simplify it. You know, sometimes you look at this big mountain and then really you only supposed to look, it's just like the one first step that you need to take. Mm. And it, like we mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, all of us, we're create, we come from creators. So we all have yeah. these ideas and just sometimes we just feel like we can't execute on it. So that was like really huge. Like, can I do it? Right. Uh, and that fear that has been built up with this, with the culture of like, you can't do it. Mm -hmm. uh, set. And so I would say the, the just failure to launch or fear to mm. launch and yeah. the access to capital. And I'm a big person of like, get all of that out the way and keep right. going. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Just so do it. Capital, right. When you don't have capital, like capital doesn't only come in the form of money. It's mm. also human capital, social capital, like again, relationships. Like I always say to people in the mastermind, you don't have to have money. You just need to know people with money. Exactly. I agree. <laughs> and so I would, I, I mean, we would come together and strategically break down any barriers because it, like we said, it, it's a barrier almost at every turn as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. It's going to be something. All we're doing is problem solving as entrepreneurs. We're problem solvers. Right. So it's, it's never going to be a time where it's just easy selling. So I would just say like breaking down those hurdles and those obstacles at every turn collectively mm -hmm. together is like the power of a mastermind. Oh, wow. I love that. Now, yeah. in addition to all the amazing things you're doing, you are also helping out kids with your LA camp. Can you please tell us about that? And like maybe a success story of some of the kids you've worked with? Yeah. So I, again, just came from an idea. I would always think like, wow, the stuff or the challenges that I'm facing now, I wish I would have known this as a kid. Right. I wish I would have known like, how to do a pitch deck younger. Yes. Um, how to, what's this tax for? What is the LLC? What's the right? What's the corporation? <laughs> like, I feel like this should be ingrained in the school system. Mm-hmm. And it's just the ease, like, mm. oh, yeah, do an LLC. Instead exactly. Of like, oh, my God, how do I do an LLC? How do I form an LLC? Right. It's just natural. And so I, that just stayed on my heart, and God would not let it rest. And so I said to my husband, I said, I'm going to start a, um, a kids entrepreneur camp. Mm -hmm. And this started back in, was it? It was 2018, and it was coming from, I just left Dartmouth and, um, it was a lot of different, uh, it was a Dartmouth, it was a lot of different obstacles that I was dealing with, with my business. Okay. And that was like, kind of spawned, like, if I knew this, if I knew this, this would be better. And so when I left Dartmouth, I said, we're going to, I'm going to start an entrepreneur camp. And I started at my house. Okay. <laughs> so I, <laughs> right. I, my first one, I didn't have, I, I never let things get in my way. So I didn't have a venue to have it. Okay. Um, I just had it at my home. And so 16 young kids came to uh, my home and we did uh, perfecting your pitch and how to build a website. And we was doing it on Shopify. Oh, wow. And, just, and they loved it. And it was, and you know, with kids, it comes natural. Mm -hmm. It's hard for us as adults to kind of navigate. That's things. true. Like, they grasp it really quick. So that's when I started it back in 2018 and just uh, been going ever since. Right. No, I love that because even as, you know, an, as an entrepreneur and as an adult, there are things that I look at, like, I wish I knew this when I was a kid. I wish I knew this going into college. Um, and I think we would probably have way more entrepreneurs 
had they knew this information. And I know in some communities, you just don't get that information. So I say to you, thank you for encouraging the kids. Thank you for connecting them to other entrepreneurs because it's definitely needed. It's needed in our communities. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yep. And so while you're inspiring all these entrepreneurs, I'm sure you have a lot of great advice. Um, but let's like give me one piece of advice for entrepreneurs that are looking to get into these beauty businesses, create a beauty brand. Like what advice would you give them? OK, so in the beauty space, uh, I would say to the advice of having the duality of that that difference. This is mm -hmm. new. I'm gonna give the example of the sweet potato pie collection. Okay. It was we never heard of sweet potato pie pie and hair care together. So we had that newness to it. Mm -hmm. Never heard of the, some of the ingredients that was in it. I haven't heard cinnamon and sweet potato, but then there's that familiarity. So you have mm -hmm. that balance the newness mm -hmm. and the familiarity because right. potato pies it, uh, alone that's familiar to us like we right. remember thanksgiving sweet potato pie grandma cooking it and we can almost smell it it's familiar right. to us so having thinking of products and ideas to have both um is really great and it it brings attention a lot mm -hmm. of times journalists when it's what do you have new what do you have right um exciting what's what coming up <laughs> exactly what's different from what's already out there to think of when you're thinking of that innovation like how can I make it where it's it's different new mm -hmm. and also familiar okay to have that together so I would say that's one piece of advice because a lot of times people just offer a product and it's completely different and like I said people are like I don't want to be a guinea pig I'm, mm. right <laughs> and then completely familiar where it's like okay what's that how is that different than all the 20 other things that's on the show right so so that's starting at the ideation point is just super important the difference and familiarity okay great. I love that so I know, you know, Donna's recipe is doing really well. You're in Alta, you're in other stores, but what can we expect for the future? Oh, yes. So we're always cooking up something exciting. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we have something new coming out. We like to like keep that question mark. Okay. And so like if you go to our page and Donna's recipe, we're always asking our customer because they, they, the customer, our customer, we call them uh, the cousins. Okay. He, they are the celebrity, like you mm -hmm. are a celebrity. Um, and so we want to celebrate you. And what do you want to see? And so we're always asking questions like, what do you want to see next? And okay. like, even if you go to our page, people are saying different things. And so we listen. And so this summer, late summer, we're going to have something brand new coming out. Okay, I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and so we're super excited. Um, as again, the cousins have been just as excited about what's new. Um, and that's part of the marketing strategy as well. It's like keeping that excitement mm -hmm. going. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I love it. So there's one question that I ask every guest, and that is, what is your superpower as an entrepreneur in the business of beauty? Okay. I would say my superpower is really identifying my gifts and other people's gifts. Mm. And... I used to think like it was normal to to see that, but a lot of times, like we talked before, is that fear. And so I'm like, mm -hmm. I know that I'm really good at innovation and marketing and sales. And I lean into that mm. and just really go like in overdrive with that. Right. Because that's <laughs> and when I see other people, I identify other people people like even people on our team okay. and I see like you're really good at this aspect and even if they didn't come on as mm. this particular role I identify it and I allow them to lean into that because when you do that when when you're doing something that comes natural and easy to you is it's easy it's right <laughs> like things become better and so I would say to lean into like the the gifts that you have Okay. 
also lean and allow others to lean into the gifts that you see. Now that's definitely a gift. That's a gift in itself, right? (laughs) So, uh, and you know what, amongst all the things that you're doing, Gina, how, how are you doing it? Four (laughs) kids, multiple businesses, a right. mastermind, um, feeding into the kids, reinvesting into the community. How is one able to do it? Oh, I think the same way us, we all as women um, that's caring, because I know you have a beautiful family as mm-hmm. well. And a lot of times when people ask, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> but but I want to say that I think the, just like having God and mm-hmm. understanding like there's somebody greater than I mm-hmm. uh, carrying me is super important. Another is I would not be able to do this without um, how I'm eating as well. Mm-hmm. I think that we really, our body is a temple and we really need to understand that we only have one of these. Right. <laughs> we, we don't get another like replacement. And yeah. so as I continue to grow through this journey and more responsibilities, I would, I would, I mean, I would definitely call out to God, like, what, what do you, what do I need to prepare myself for this next season? I'm Mm -hmm. having more responsibility. We're going into retail. I have a teenage son. (laughs) All these different things where like, we have to like pivot as they change too. And, and so like, he told me that what you consume and is super important energy to be able to sustain all of the things Mm -hmm. that I'm going to pour into you because it is blessings but it takes work yeah and so um you know making sure that I drink my water and eating properly is super mm-hmm. and th- these are the things we kind of don't think is important when we're younger yeah uh, but as you continue to go through having more blessings poured onto you you have to we have to take care right. of our body. have to no that makes complete sense before I start every podcast episode I say a quick prayer God, thank you for this connection. Thank you for this voice. Thank you for this platform. I am drinking my water. I took a walk this morning. (laughs) So I completely agree with that. Um, I love that, but I won't keep you. But I do want to know where can all my followers follow you um, so that we can stay in contact and so that we can be waiting for those surprises with Donna's recipe later this year. (laughs) Right. So my personal Instagram is Gina Los Angeles. Just okay. Gina Los Angeles, and our business is Donna's Recipe, and you can find that on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. Um, I'm I'm heavy on Instagram. Okay. I can't have too many platforms, but I would say you can find me Gina Los Angeles on Instagram, and then on LinkedIn, Gina Woods. Okay, I love it. And one more question: yeah. Is the mastermind open to anybody, or just out in LA? Oh no, it's so we have it virtually because people are everywhere. Okay. And uh, like I said, we have something new coming up. So I I have had a pause on the mastermind, but looking and I was just talking to another mastermind member, like it needs to start back up. Okay. So I'm going to be starting that back up. So follow me at Gina Los Angeles. Um, We do want people who are serious about whether you can be at any stage, the ideation stage or the growth stage, but we want people that are serious and making momentum because I feel like it affects everybody else. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. I just wanted to make sure we got that information out there. Well, Gina, thank you so much. This was an amazing episode. Thank you for all the information, all the gems. We absolutely love it. We are forever connected now. So I'll be seeing you on social media. Yes, thank you so much. And so inspiring of what you're doing as well is thank an you. inspiration and we we need you. And we thank you for giving your gifts to all of us. Oh, thank you so much. Have an amazing day, Gina. Too. Bye, Navali.